Hello there, internet. It's Magua here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. And today we got two more videos instead of one. I've been going up with these double daily uploads since I haven't been streaming these past few days, as I've been taking a little bit of a break from the game, waiting for this patch to go live, actually. As tomorrow onwards, you can expect me to get back on the daily streaming grind, as we're going to be trying out all sorts of new cards. And I figured I would do a second video today to talk about the patch notes in general, because we did talk about the leaks, but it turns out there were more cards changed, and I think it's important to discuss them, as I, this can also give you guys a bit of a roadmap as to what sorts of decks and videos you can expect from me in the near future, as I have a lot of ideas that I really want to test out, and I'm really excited for it. So without further ado, let's talk about the changes as we scroll down here. We uh, are going to mention, you know, shortly and briefly the changes that we already knew were happening and we discussed in the patch leaks videos and those include all of these champions right here as we have draven uh, which is again like i said before a really strong buff to the card as now his level up requirement is uh for him to st uh, strike with a total of two spinning axes which means you can play draven spawn an axe attack with draven get another axe and then the next turn whether you're blocking or attacking you can play double axe onto draven and combine that for example with the whirling death and you can level him up and then strike with a leveled up version to get two axes back or you can just give him double axes and strike and level him up like it's very easy to level up draven now even though you do need to have discard targets or cards to discard for the axes because you still need to play two axes on him at least to level up but the fact that it's more flexible and more easy to achieve now is really a big deal because draven was already a really strong champion to begin with and this makes him even better and honestly he's pretty much the golden boy of noxus as a faction right now in my opinion as him and darius are definitely the big powerhouse champions within the region and draven is just outstanding and i, I honestly like he is one of my favorite champions so i'm definitely going to be venturing into uh, more builds around Draven that go beyond, you know, Jinx, Aggro, Discard. Like, I really am a big fan of the Heimerdinger, Piltover, Allegiance sort of mid-range uh, build with Draven as a splash. Like, I really like that deck, so I definitely want to, you know, delve back into that. And this amped up version of Draven definitely goes a long way. So, uh, great card. Really excited to play more with it, but that's basically all I have to say about it. Katarina, also really neat. It kind of sucks that the leveled up version doesn't spawn a Blade's Edge every time she enters the board, but maybe that would be a little bit too much, as she is just a little bit better than she was before, and I already think Katarina was massively underrated, so you can expect more Katarina decks from me in the near future, definitely. But the first champion that I will be jumping into starting tomorrow will be Yasuo, because I love playing Yasuo. Yasuo is one of the most fun champions to mess around with. And now that he's a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four with Quick Attack, he's kind of just good on his own. The idea is to make a deck that can be cohesive and can work without him. In the sense that there will be games that I won't draw Yasuo. So that's kind of like the... That's one of the biggest challenges when it comes to deck building around this champion. Uh, because a lot of the cards that revolve or synergize with Yasuo aren't all that great without him. So it's going to be uh, a bit, like I said, a bit of a challenge, but I'm really looking forward to it. And that's the champion that you can expect me to showcase tomorrow as I will come up with a deck to feature this uh, amped up, mm, you know, samurai. L let's go with that. <laughs> Re really excited for Yasuo. Kalista is also another champion that I'm going to be uh, delving back into really soon. After Yasuo, I'll probably be going on to Kalista. And I'll try to make her work again. Kalista has been one of the biggest disappointments for me in Legends of Frontera. Uh, ever since, you know, they did what they did to her back in the preview beta. In which they completely redesigned her. Uh, when Kalista was, in fact, one of the most interesting and compelling champions in the entirety of Legends of Frontera. They made her into a very, very dull <laughs> old shadow, or not even, yeah, shadow of her former self, I guess would be the expression. And now uh, they revamped her again, but this version didn't really work out too well. It was very difficult to level her up, and without leveling her up, she was just a 3-mana 4-3 with Fearsome, which is not really the greatest in this metagame. So now that she is easier to level up, and significantly easier, by the way, like, there's a huge difference between... Like, the difference between 3 and 4, from a numerical perspective, is probably the most impactful difference, or the most, you know, 
yeah, the most notable uh, noticeable difference in this game. Like, when you go from 3 to 4 health, that's huge. That's why the Yasuo buff is really big. Because all of a sudden, you know, you, you survive a lot of very, very relevant shit. And the same goes for a uh, number of allies going down. Like, the difference between 3 and 4, we're talking about 25%. Of, uh, of a buff, uh, and it's it's pretty significant. Like, there's a lot of ways in which you can level up Kalista now immediately that you weren't able to before, and I, I definitely want to try her out, and she will be on my priority list for sure. Let's see if that's enough, honestly, uh, because it's not like the payoff of Kalista is as big as it seems on paper, because uh, it turns out that she, she can kind of end up a, like a little bit of a glorified Zed in a way um even after you manage to level her up so you need to design a proper deck that can abuse her right and there's not that many followers right now that are as abusable as you would want them to be but there are some neat cheeky combos that i'm in determined to make work and those includes the like of tiana crown guard with her i think there's there has to be a way to make that relatively consistent and I will not rest until I make it happen. So excited for that. We got Lauren Duelist going up from three power to four. Not a hugely relevant change, but I do feel like this guy is kind of worth it in an Undying deck now, for example. Uh, or with Shadow Owls in general, because you have a lot of Last Breath effects there. So giving a, a Last Breath effect unit challenger is really, really neat and can net you really good value. And the plus attack is, is neat. Like it definitely goes... I wouldn't say a long way. It goes away. <laughs> Let's say that. It, it does something. It can enable this guy to trade into four health units, and it can be a better blocker in general. Not necessarily a better attacker, because he's still going to get chump blocked and killed early on. But as a blocker, he definitely excels more, and I will be trying him out in that sense. Vanguard Bannerman. Uh, we were talking about this as well. I'm, I'm not sure if the Lauren Duelist changed. No, this was not, uh, this was not in the leaks. So this is, uh, you know... One of the first, in fact, the first that we're talking about that did not was not mentioned before. Because the Vanguard Bannerman was changed, and we did talk extensively about this last time. I think it's going to still be really strong. And for now, the best Demacia deck, really. But ultimately, uh, later, you know, as more expansions come out and more cards are available, I do believe Bannerman will uh, eventually concede its position as the number one Demacia deck to something else. And I, for one, am looking for that day to come. As we move on to Blood for Blood, which um, I don't know why is like purple colored here. That's, that's a little bit... I, I guess it's some sort of like <laughs> low-key censorship or something. You know, blood, if it's red, it's bad. If it's purple, it's good. You know, it's, it's, it's alien goo. It's fine. Hashtag grape juice. Blood for Blood is... Honestly, one of the worst cards in the game. <laughs> I really would like this card to be good. Uh, the big problem is if this card was burst speed, it would be decent. I still think three mana is way too much for it. I still think if this card was one mana, it would then become somewhat playable. Yeah, there are synergies. Like you can use this on the Crimson Curator and you're technically uh, drawing two cards off of this. Right, but you're still playing a card that is highly disruptible because of the fact that it's fast speed and a very expensive card at that. Now it's two mana, which makes it a little bit better, but I still don't think this is a card that you play in the Crimson Archetype. I just don't. Like, I compare this to Transfusion. It's, it's just, no, no, it just doesn't. If it was Burst Speed, man, if it was Burst Speed, I, I would consider this card. But otherwise, I just don't think it's a reliable resource. Maybe later down the line, there are some neat combos with this as the new sets arrive and we get more cards. But as of right now, I just don't think this card is worth your time, honestly. My fucking Kato the Arm as we feature him yesterday in a video got buffed, man. And now he's really, dude, he's solid. Like I'm saying, going from three health to four, big deal. Big, big muscle deal. And this guy is going to love that. He's going to be much harder to take down. Way more resilient, and thus, uh, honestly, a solid 5-drop that can just go in a lot of different decks. I love the idea of Kato in a deck with Zed. Like, not only, obviously, the obvious synergy with Shiraza is really neat, right? But I think, from a competitive perspective, you can't overlook Kato's synergy with Zed. Like, it's really, really strong. 
And there's a lot of other neat, uh, you know, champions or, or followers that this can work really well with. And overall, it's just a solid 5 drop that you can play on curve, has decent stats, can trade evenly with Garen, for example, but not get chump blocked by 3 attack units, which are very numerous, especially those pesky 2 mana 3 twos that we don't die to now. And that's the biggest thing, not dying to those, which allows Kato to attack and uh, be harder to just, you know, block uh, efficiently for the opponent and thus giving you a very, very neat effect, potentially more than once in a match, which is when the likes of Kato gets uh, really, really valuable, right? So fantastic buff. That's definitely going to make this card uh, actually competitive, and I am really excited about that. Another huge buff, by the way. Not one, but two stats. Averos and Trapper going from 2-2 to 3-3. I think this is an incredible buff. I think this card is all of a sudden really playable, and I will definitely be messing around with uh, Yeti decks in the future because I, I i do feel like they can be decent uh, yeti just need a little bit of extra support there are some neat ideas like combining them with uh the likes of the um uh, trifaring assessor which is a card that i'm a big fan of and i tried them with professor von jib but ultimately ended up with the professor von jib spider deck because <laughs> it was a little bit redundant to buff the the five fives and the seven sevens and they really, they didn't really accomplish much there right but still i, I really do like the yeti concept and i i, I will be delving into it and seeing if i can find some nice good like cycle sort of effects because the, the tricky thing about the yeti deck is drawing the five fives right because you're you're placing them in your deck but you need a way to cycle through your deck so you can get these one minute five fives and actually get this crazy value going on right and i i do believe it's possible i, I think yetis will only get better as more cards come to support them not necessarily directly maybe indirectly through good card draw or card cycling effects ways to run through your deck faster are uh, inherently going to make the archetype, if we can even call it that, because there are not that many cards that comprise this archetype, but, you know, let's call it archetype. It, it'll, it'll make it more consistent and overall more competitive, and I'm looking forward to that, and this buff is definitely a big step in that direction. Uh, I really like what they did with the Avarice and Trapper. He was definitely way understated and just uh, not really impactful as a 3-drop, which is gonna be changed now but a even bigger buff this is perhaps one of the buffs that i'm most excited about is the starlet seer this is guys this buff is ridiculous like yeah going from a, a two two for three mana to three three big buff right but a two mana two two and a two mana two three the difference is astronomical like and there's a reason why this card was a two mana two two by the way this card is kind of ridiculous now it's kind of like tier one sort of two drop it's it's crazy it's really good it's like it's kind of like an omen hawk engine right it's giving you the base stat line for a two drop as, as a two three and an ongoing like this thing doesn't die to mystic shots now this it's harder to take away it can it can survive longer and that means a whole lot of potential doom for the opponent if, if you're if you manage to get like two or three spells with this thing on the board you're already getting really crazy value out of the card right and i'm, I'm really excited to design decks in which this card can feel right at home and support them and i i think it's because of the stat line now it's way more flexible in that sense like it can fit it doesn't have to be like a super specialized deck designed around it by any means it can just be a support card like i could see this card scene play for example in ash frostbite mid-range list as we're getting extra value out of our frostbites and thus empowering our trifaring assessors for example which you know by giving us more uh units with uh, potentially high attack to uh draw off of right i just i think this card is going to be pretty universal now and a really strong two drop from froyard that we have all of a sudden and i'm really excited for it definitely we'll be testing it out in multiple different decks and i'll see if i can find the right home in which it can get like actual crazy value right really really excited I'm, I'm a big fan of starlets here i have been for a long time but I, just, I have not been able to find a proper deck for him and i think things are going to change significantly around this card and i'm super super excited for that wording stones went from three health to four you know not that much of a i mean this was the this was like the preview yeah this was the the, the preview beta like stat line which they're going back to uh, we'll see uh, just how relevant this card is because people have, have kind of like been, they've moved beyond or they moved past the whole uh, ramping mechanics and only uh, the five mana 
uh, forgot what the card is, like the one that heals you three, uh, burst speed. Well, only that spell has really seen play, so maybe this is enough to get this card actually rolling. Um, I haven't really tried any sort of like ramping shenanigans in a while, so maybe I'll I'll be trying that out for sure. But a card that I'm really excited about is the Shady character. This is low key a very very massive. Uh, buff. I remember showcasing this to my girlfriend earlier and she was like, what's the point of giving this, you know, more health if it's going to change? And the point is that it's uh, a skill, right? This is a skill that goes on the stack, which means that it, you can interact with Shady Character before he transforms. And him having one health made him completely unplayable. Because the fear of playing a 4-drop that could be answered by a Vile Feast or a Mystic Shot, even a Blade's Edge, really, Withering Whale, Static Shock, there were a plethora of cards that could just shut the, down this card for a very cheap price and thus it just it just put it in meme tier and it was forever doomed to be there but now with three health everything changed because now you need either a get excited to discard a card you need a grasp of the undying which is five mana like he can still be answered but you don't it, it's it's actually like an even trade and for, with grasp of the undying you're actually gaining one mana off of that exchange so it's not really that bad of a thing for that to happen right and it makes it so that shady character has a lot of potential like I, there's there's some neat ideas that i have around him like the first one that i have and it's a deck that you guys will see very soon is a concept that i i got from uh, a fellow card boy enthusiast at ecop who designed a deck around the um what, what was the name of the uh Wait, let me actually, like, I have it right here. What was the name of the card? The Assembly Bot. Yeah, the Assembly Bot. This is a deck that I'm, I'm working on. I'm, I'm going to share, I'm going to show you guys for a second. This is a deck that I'm working on. Uh, it's called Westworld. And uh, you guys got a sneak peek there. That I'll be showcasing in the channel soon. Which uh, utilizes Shady Character to copy the Assembly Bot. Like, I like a lot to incorporate Shady Character in decks in which you have certain followers that gain massive stats and value and you can uh, duplicate that with a four drop play i like it more so than than shady character as a reactive card to copy what your opponent is generating because that's that makes them very matchup dependent and uh very clunky uh, you know depending on, on what you're facing right but if, if you're if you have him in your deck as kind of like a combo piece uh it, he can be really strong in that case and that's that's the sort of you know environment that i, I want to uh, test shady character out and i think uh this card has a lot of potential in that sense and it has it's not really been explored at all because of its initial stat line being extremely vulnerable to cheap removal but now that that has changed it's opened a new door and it's kind of like we got a new card in a way because nobody really even thought about this card ever and now all of a sudden it has uh pretty serious competitive implications and i'm definitely uh super excited like it's it's up there with like starlet seer sort of like tier for me when it comes to like cards that i'm really really excited to test out like starlet seer shady character new yasuo uh new katarina Callista. those those are the cards that i'm really hyped about and then uh, as we saw earlier the frenzy skitter or nerf we talked about this prior uh, not really much more to say very happy about it i think it's a really good decision and yeah that's basically it so that is my you know patch review i guess for today it wasn't too long you know we kept it in 20 minutes go me really really excited to try out with all these cards and uh, just really excited for these next few weeks as we're actually gonna have stuff to do before we get the new expansion which i need now man but it's just two weeks from now it's actually 14 days from now so we're we're close we're pretty close so just gotta relax wait and try out uh, all these new changes really like the the approach that they've taken you know making a, a a big balance change every month it keeps things really fresh and it's definitely something that i i think we all needed to uh you know get this this final run at the season and get ready for launch and the new expansion with a new region and a bunch of new toys that i can't wait for myself so yeah thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video have a sold day stay tuned for daily legends of runeterra content i upload a video every single day on this channel sometimes as you can see two of them so you know subscribe for that hit the bell thing because apparently it helps you actually get notified of my videos I, I don't know why we need a bell but click the fucking bell <laughs> it's free i promise and that's all i gotta say have a sold day thank you for watching i'll see you tomorrow